On today's episode of Southern Girl Meets Vegetarian Boy, we are talking ground meat substitute. What? We're gonna start by making homemade breakfast sausage, then I'm gonna show you how to make barbecue meatballs that are perfect for any party or gathering. And then we're gonna round out this entire ground meat extravaganza with vegetarian stroganoff, which is one of my all-time favorite meals. If you're ready, let's get started. Growing up, my parents made brunch every single Sunday, and part of that brunch was always homemade breakfast sausage. So whenever you're talking about breakfast sausage, you're talking about some kind of a ground protein and then a ton of spices. I'm gonna start with one pound of my ground meat substitute, and then I'm gonna season it with a lot of, of flavoring agents. So almost always, breakfast sausage has a little bit of sweet. I'm using brown sugar. If you don't have brown sugar, you can use just regular sugar or honey or maple syrup. You just want something that's gonna add a little sweetness, but then also caramelize in the pan. Okay, herbs. I'm using poultry seasoning. Whatever your favorite poultry seasoning is, just use that. This one has thyme and oregano and a little bit of sage. The sage is key for me. It adds this really nice warmth. It's like um, herby, but there's like a minty, eucalyptus, like kind of effervescentness to sage that I really love in breakfast sausage. Garlic powder, that is just gonna give it a nice umami punch. My heat is coming from red pepper flakes. If you don't have red pepper flakes, you can use cayenne or hot sauce. If you don't like spicy, just leave it out, but I love spicy food. This is a half a teaspoon of anise. If you don't have anise, you can use fennel or tarragon. Those are all great substitutes for this. You're just looking for something that has like a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of that licorice flavor. That is what is so fun about making your own homemade breakfast sausage. You can season it any way you want. We need salt and pepper. My ratio for a pound of protein is one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper for every pound. And then a teaspoon of pepper. Boom. Okay, now we stir. And we're just gonna mix all these flavors up. We're using all those dried herbs. And so one of the things that's so cool about making your sausage is if you if you season your sausage up and let it sit for a little bit, those flavors actually come alive. That's it. And now we just portion and we fry these little bad boys up. Medium heat. Once my pan is screaming hot, this little bad boy is going into that pan. Ready? Two, three, four. You hear the sizzle. If you're enjoying the content, please subscribe to the channel. We come out with new content all the time and you'll be the first to know. It smells exactly like my parents' house in 1988. This is vegan? What? One of the best things about making your own breakfast sausage is that you're gonna get this sausage, but you're also gonna have a lot of drippings left in the pan. If you want to, you can then make a pan gravy out of it. You can get some biscuits, you could put a sausage on there and you could pour gravy over the top. I really love breakfast. I really, really love breakfast sausage. And this was one of the recipes that I knew I needed to recreate when I married a vegetarian. They're gonna take about three to four minutes per side. I like my breakfast sausage a little bit thicker. If you like your center, just give them a little press and they'll cook even faster. Okay, who's ready to flip? We're gonna flip, flip, flip. Okay, let's flip him. Who's ready to flip? I'm gonna see if this guy's ready. He was. If your pan's too small, you're gonna have to cook this in two batches. That's fine. That's why you have the tray waiting for you. Ooh, that is delicious. That's what we're looking for, some caramelized, brown, delicious crust on the outside. Let's get these bad boys out of the pan. Oh my gosh. Just like mom and dad used to make. Mm. You want a taste? You want a little taste with me? The crunch on the outside is so good. A little bit sweet, which is characteristic of any kind of breakfast sausage, and then heat and all of those herbs. Ooh, there's like a nice little kick to it, but you're also getting two types of sweetness, the brown sugar and the anise. That little anise, the licorice trick in your brain is making you think like, oh, this is a little, a little sweeter than it is. Ooh, it is spicy, y'all. I really could absolutely eat breakfast sausage all day, but I'm not going to because now it's time to make barbecue meatballs. 
They're also a throwback to my childhood. There's a secret ingredient. It's grape jelly. It's not actually that secret. Okay, so vegetarian meatballs. You can 100% use this recipe for spaghetti and meatballs. You could use it for meatball subs. You can use it for meatball pizzas. You can use it for meatballs. I'm gonna toss them in this grape jelly slash barbecue sauce combination, which is another throwback recipe. 1988 coming at ya. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You've seen these before. It's barbecue meatballs, and the secret ingredient is a little grape jelly. Let's make them. To our one pound of meat substitute, I'm gonna add in some cheese. Now it can be vegan cheese or it can be traditional cheese. You just want something in the Parmesan style. Quarter cup of breadcrumbs. I like the ones that are seasoned with Italian herbs just because it's like an extra layer of flavor, but you can also use plain or panko or crackers. You just need a quarter cup of some kind of a drying agent. Two teaspoons of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and then two tablespoons of chopped parsley, three tablespoons of milk or plant-based milk. That's our moistener. That's what keeps it wet. Half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Now give it a stir. So substitutions. If you don't have milk, you could use sour cream. You could use cream cheese. You just want something that's gonna have some fattiness to it and some liquid. No parsley, no problem. Use like poultry seasoning or basil would be delicious in this. Anything you want really, oregano, come on, it's all great. No garlic powder. I, you just can't even make this recipe. I don't know what to tell you, just kidding. Okay, we're ready. Let's ball these bad boys up. We're just gonna use like a heaping tablespoon and we're gonna get about 25 balls. Meatballs, that is. Tag team, back again. If you need a glass, then get a friend. I just like my balls big. Nothing new. She likes big balls. There we go. Our meatballs are ready to bake. 350 degrees for about 20, 25 minutes. Subscribe to the channel because all the time we are just breaking people's brains with intense discussions of the makings of the universe. Like, how many meatballs is the right amount of meatballs for spaghetti and meatballs? Okay, so now that you have your meatballs cooked, let's talk about our sauce. Again, you can put any sauce that you wanted to on these meatballs. I'm gonna do a barbecue sauce. Any jarred barbecue sauce that you want, about three quarters of a cup, half a cup of grape jelly, and then one tablespoon of a garlic chili sauce. So we've all had this recipe a million times, right? You've gone to a party or you've gone to like a potluck and there's some kind of a slow cooker, some frill picks, and a whole thing of hot, glazed, delicious, meatballs. That is what this recipe is, only now it's vegetarian. You should have seen Derek's face the first time he had these barbecue meatballs because you know he's been a vegetarian for 30 plus years and so he had never been introduced to the joy that is grape jelly barbecue meatballs and when he had them the biggest smile came across his face. Keep giving it a little stir until it comes up to a simmer. You're just looking for that jam to melt with the barbecue sauce. Once it starts simmering, you're ready to put your meatballs back into the barbecue glaze and just give them a nice little stir to coat. The best part about this recipe is that it actually is perfect for a party. Because of all that sauce, these stay nice and tender and warm in a slow cooker on super low on your stovetop. Look, this recipe my parents only made when we were having a party. And so just the smell of it has me excited. Who's ready to try one? This girl, let's get the fancy toothpicks. Look at these little balls. Hello, friends. You're going to a party, you're going to a party, you're going to a party, you might get asked to leave. He always drinks too much and gets to a fight. Let's taste. Absolutely delicious. This is a great party food. It stays warm for a long amount of time and everybody loves this recipe. You think we're done, we're not done. I've given you homemade breakfast sausage, nostalgic. I've given you grape jelly barbecue meatballs, nostalgic. Well, we are not gonna end this party in current day. We're still living in the 1980s with vegetarian stroganoff. What? Vegetarian stroganoff is 
just like beef stroganoff, except for we're using our ground meat substitute. We're gonna start by cooking our noodles, just throw them into boiling salted water. And I like something that has like a little twirl to it. These little tornado shaped pasta are perfect because all the sauce gets soaked into them. Give your pasta a little stir and let them boil until it's nice and tender, about eight to 10 minutes. Stroganoff is a gravy-like dish that's served over noodles. There's almost always mushrooms in it, and oftentimes there's beef, but for this, we're using meat substitute. You're still gonna get all the same flavor, all the same protein, but you're not eating any animal. Maybe you got bit by a tick, you can't have red meat anymore. Maybe you love animals, maybe you care about the environment. I don't know why you're here watching this wonderful episode, but I'm glad you are, and I'm glad I can introduce you to some fun, but still nostalgic ways to eat the dishes that I grew up with, or maybe you grew up with them. Now just set these off to the side, and you're gonna use that same pan to build your sauce. Look at those! They smell great. You're gonna add a couple tablespoons of oil. You still have some residue of the oil that comes with that protein, um, but you need a little bit more just because we're gonna be adding a ton of vegetables and there's gonna be a lot of liquid. One medium onion, just saute until tender, about four to five minutes. Give them a little stir. That's gonna grab up all the little protein niblets that were left on the bottom. And so as your onions are cooking, they're also kind of taking on a little bit of that meaty flavor. How do you feel about that? Like when we say the term meaty, but we're talking about vegetarian food or vegan food, what do you think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Again, we're always trying to start conversations about food and about plant-based food and about vegetarian food. So if you've got comments, leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. While these onions are cooking, I'm going to strain my pasta. Now that our onions are tender, I'm gonna add in cremini mushrooms. This is eight ounces of sliced creminis. You can use button mushrooms or you can use shiitakes. You can honestly use whatever mushrooms you want. I like creminis because they're affordable and you can almost always find them at the grocery store. If you don't like mushrooms, like my little brother, just don't put the mushrooms in. Dylan hates mushrooms. He hates the flavor and the texture, so it's a double whammy for him. Look at that. Give them a toss so that they're cooking on both sides, and then you all, this is gonna come together really fast after this. Oh my gosh, it's looking gorgeous. Okay, everybody, pay attention, because this is gonna go fast. We're about to make our sauce, which is essentially gravy, and so it starts with fat and then flour. Two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We give it a little stir so that it coats everything and it cooks off that raw flour flavor. Now we're gonna build in all of the flavor of stroganoff, which is a little bit of Dijon mustard, two teaspoons of garlic powder. Give all that a little stir, and now we're gonna go in with our liquids. One cup of vegetable stock, and we're just gonna whisk this in so we don't get any clumps of flour, but honestly, you usually don't. If you don't love a super creamy gravy, just double the vegetable stock here and you'll end up with a stroganoff that's more of like a brown gravy sauce. Still delicious, just a little different. I personally love kind of like a, a white gravy. So I'm gonna add in one cup of cream or oat milk. Give it a little stir. We want a little bit more flavor, so I'm gonna go in with a couple tablespoons of bourbon. You could 100% use wine or just omit this if you don't love bourbon. I do though. And then a teaspoon of liquid smoke, just right in there. That's gonna add this nice smokiness. It's just really a way to build some of the flavors that we think about in traditional stroganoff into our vegetarian stroganoff. This is gonna simmer for a couple of minutes and it'll thicken just enough that it coats the back of a spoon. See, a little bit of salt. A little bit of black pepper. Once it's simmering, it'll be nice and thick and it's time to temper in our sour cream. You have to temper sour cream or plant-based sour cream because this is a, a milk product that has been soured. And if you don't temper it, it will, it'll curdle. It'll separate in your sauce. Give that a whisk. Whoa, whisk. Whisk in, whisk in, whisk in. Should we have a whisking song? 
whisk, 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 whisk away. Maybe you don't want to do this. Yeah, <laughs> so, this is making me sad. <laughs> Personally, I was like this before. Protein goes back into the sauce, and then you're just gonna gently heat this baby. Couple of minutes, and you're ready to eat. I always have flat leaf parsley and green onions at my house. But you could use whatever you have on hand, thyme or sage. These would all be delicious. You're just looking to add a little bit of color to the dish because it really is just like beige on beige. Okay, stir in a little bit and then save some for garnish. Now, sauce over the top. And you can still see all the texture. That's what you really want. Mushrooms and our protein and all of those little onion nuggets. And then the tender little noodles underneath. Top it with a little green onions and some parsley. That's just to really make it look pretty. Okay, you ready to try it? I'm ready to try it. Fork! Thank you. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Vegetable protein, so this is nice. It's gonna keep us feeling full. This is 100% a bowl of my childhood. It's so comforting. It feels like getting hugged by your mom or laying underneath a quilt. There's a ton of different textures, so a little bit of chew from that plant-based protein, then you have the mushrooms, and then those tender, slippery little pasta noodles. Have to say, there is a reason why this is one of my favorite dishes, and it's because it tastes delicious. One more bite, and then I'll close out this episode. I promise y'all, just one little tiny bite, one. We started with homemade breakfast sausage, moved on to barbecue meatballs, perfect for your next party, and finished with the most nostalgic bowl of vegetarian stroganoff. And that is our ground meat substitute episode. Make sure to tell me which one of these recipes is your favorite in the comments below, and I will see you next week for the next episode of Southern Girl Meets Vegetarian Boy. Bye y'all. You know what keeps me going on long filming Ooh. days? Sometimes coffee, but sometimes you gotta have wings. Red Bull gives you wings. Just trying it out. Let's just see. Let's just get a Red Bull sponsorship, y'all. <laughs>